keynote session of the day. Talking about the future, the future of marketing by Lauren Ezekiel, Chief Marketing and Growth Officer, WPP. Now, he helps the brands to build a bridge to the future. He transforms agencies through winning global new business and driving client growth, making him one of the industry's most recognized and influential leaders truly. Before joining WPP, Lauren held the twin role of uh, president of Digitas, North America and International Plus Group Client Leader for GSK. Now, during his 16 years at Digitas, Laurent helped uh, build the business into an award-winning global marketing and technology agency. What a man to begin this day with. Please, let's all, wherever we are, put our hands together. for well, Laurent Ezekiel with the first keynote session of the day at Day 2 Tech Munch. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the welcome. Much appreciated. Gitika, um, I can't promise such great anecdotes, but can you hear me clearly? Okay, very good. I'm going to share my screen in that in that in that, in that case. And uh, so, thank you very much, Katika. Thank you very much, Dr. Batra. Uh, it's an honor to be here, and I appreciate you inviting me. Uh, actually, my last trip uh, before the lockdown was to Mumbai. I landed back in London on March the fifth. So uh, maybe my first trip after lockdown will be back to India. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit today uh, about the future of marketing. And I'm going to try and get this um, done in about 20, 25 minutes. So hopefully there's a little bit of time for questions. Um, interrupt me if at any point the audio goes a bit funny. I know how these things work. But this is very much sort of a perspective on the future uh, of marketing. And we're going to start with a pres uh, video. Uh, hopefully that will play properly. Uh, so we'll hit play on that now. Allison, can you explain what internet is? You have it in green. Sure. Here it is. I'll take it. Please send it out to me. Here's my credit card. Today, there are more than 5,000 computers. We're going to put a computer on every desk in every home. We're trying to make something that people love. Someday, it's this restaurant. The lunar aid has the death. What if you could type directly from your brain? It sounds impossible, but it's closer than you may realize. Retail will change more in the next five years than it has in the last 50. It also has incredibly small haptic engine. You're going to swallow a pill and ingest information. So the future is now, and this is the point. And uh, imagine utility, experience, all those things were not part of the marketing nomenclature a few years ago. As Gatika said, it's an incredible time uh, to be in the industry, and frankly, a, an incredibly exciting time uh, to be CMO. And the, the way the world is working is completely changing, uh, if there was any doubt. I mean, imagine any of those things in that film just a handful of years ago, ride-sharing companies like Uber, and Lyft only launched 10 years ago. Amazon, Alexa, and voice activated services just five years ago. And we cannot imagine a world without those technologies. Now, this year alone, a billion dollars is invested into flying car companies. And there are 25 different flying car companies at different stages of progress and innovation around the world. And the valuations of these companies are only going one way. Uh, this is actually a, a few months old as a valuation, but at $5 trillion, you know, Facebook, Google, Amazon, Alibaba, Tencent, um, these valuations over the next 10 years are predicted to go from five to 50 trillion. So the rate of pace, as Gitika said, is only going to increase. And in fact, by 2025, 40% of the Fortune 500 will be new digital entrants. So not just new companies in the Fortune 500, new technology-driven, new digital 
entrance, which is an incredible pace of, of change in that respect. And what's fascinating about APAC uh, is that it's home to about 50% uh, of the world's fastest growing companies uh, at the moment. And you know, even if you think about India, just India alone, you've got some of their most valuable unicorns, Paytm, Oyo Rooms, for example, and BJU in terms of education tech. So really some valuable and high growth companies, which is exciting. And I think one of the points about the future of marketing is the constant need for change, the constant need to break into new categories. And even the companies with these high valuations, uh, if you take the FANGs just for a minute, well-known term, they've managed to diversify very well. They've had to go into new areas. Uh, finance, has been something that Facebook has focused on very much. In terms of Amazon, they've been pivoting towards health increasingly. Uh, Google and, of course, Waymo in terms of transportation, and even Apple in terms of uh, acquisitions around uh, home security uh, with uh, Lighthouse. And so these companies are really pushing themselves, pushing into new categories. And even brands that um, are a bit more... Uh, in a less high growth space, a more traditional space are doing so. And some of you will know these brands, some of you may not, but uh, Equinox is a US-based health and wellness uh, company that has gyms. West Ham is a home furnishing company and LVMH, you will all know. They don't have a lot in common, but what they have done is they've pivoted to the hotel and hospitality industry. And this is not a new thing. They've been doing this for a number of years, of course, Equinox hotels have got Equinox products and gyms, the same for West Elm. And LVMH, in fact, have got a multitude of properties which they manage to LVMH standards around the world. So really interesting pivot in that respect. And I think this is the way we must all be thinking. And I looked for some examples in India. You will all know, of course, uh, this one. Uh, you'll all know Reliance Geo, the biggest telco in India. Um, but it wasn't born that way. Uh, it was born in industry, in petroleum, but it now operates across business in energy, textile, natural resource, retail, and of course, telecommunications. So really a good job in that respect. And after launching their mobile service, they quickly became the biggest telco in India. Uh, innovative, focus and approach that's recently landed big investments from some of the companies I've mentioned. Facebook, 5.7 billion uh, for a 10, just under a 10% stake. Google investing, four and a half billion for a 7% stake. So we must, must future-proof our clients. Those on the line from agencies, those on the line at brands, future-proof yourselves, future-proof our clients. It's something that is so exciting about the agency landscape at the moment is our ability to be able to work with our clients um, to do that. And I think that one of the things to think about is that the old terminology categories have changed. Just like those brands, uh, the fangs have pivoted, so have the categorization. And this is something that we think about a lot at WPP. You know, telco has evolved, retail, travel, healthcare, and of course, automotive. And we need to be thinking more broadly. You know, telco becomes media, of course. Uh, I don't need to tell you about the fragmentation uh, of that space in terms of content, in terms of access. Retail becomes commerce, accelerated, accelerated tenfold through the pandemic. Travel becomes more around hospitality and travel. Healthcare, very, very much into the wellness space. And automotive around mobility. We're working with mobility companies uh, to put content in cars. So it really is very broad when it comes to these new categories. And that's, I think, an important mindset uh, to be had. Um, think about Uber during the pandemic. Uh, they did a fantastic job uh, of pivoting from rides to eats. The rides business virtually uh, shut down. The eats business accelerated at a pace I don't think anyone could have imagined, but a fantastic example of a, of a, of a company doing a great job in terms of pivoting uh, what they need to be doing during a pandemic. And so mobility becomes bigger than that it becomes about the future of brands in motion and i i've put some of the brands in here that are doing a good job you know the future of an all-electric economy for example we'll see manufacturers like Ate energy lotia auto 22 motors and electric scooters you know byd electrica for example in terms of electric buses 
So very important that we think more broadly in that respect. And the same goes for commerce. You know, when we speak about commerce, we speak about the future of a cashless society. I think we've still got a bit of a way to go there. Um, but the adoption of a cashless society is a huge topic around the world, but it's an even bigger topic in APAC and India in particular. And I'm sure you'll hear uh, more about that later from uh, Raja, who does a great job at talking about that. Um, but we're shifting away from cash into cashless, for sure. There's no question about that. Uh, and it is a big topic. And they, you've got some great leaders in India, Paytm, PhonePay, of course, uh, and WhatsApp and Google Pay, uh, looking to branch out increasingly in this space around the world, but not just them, not just them. Retailers such as Amazon and Walmart are also joining this space. And I'm gonna play a video now from Suresh Balaji. Uh, Suresh Balaji is the head of marketing uh, for HSBC across Asia Pacific. And you can listen to him a little bit about the impact of new technology on brands and his brand today. My name is Suresh Balaji. I work at HSBC. I'm the regional head of marketing for Asia. Back in the day, financial services used to be all about products. It was build and they would come. Here's a personal loan, put it on the shelf and somebody would pick it up. But now we are starting to think about it as an end-to-end -end experience. And it's moving from just understanding your customers with a clipboard and a pen to hoovering data to understand them better so that we can be in the moment with them, trying to solve things for them. And finally, supported and, and the transformation supported by all the changes in technology that's available for us. Everything from 5G, uh, advent of 5G to IoT, which is becoming real now and, and wearables and the ability for us to use all of that to solve for our customers is the way we are transforming. And all of that needs imagination and all of that needs applied creativity. So that's great to hear from him. Um, I'm going to play you three examples now uh, against three trends. And uh, one is that uh, brands are spending differently. You know this, but it's interesting to see some examples of the work. And the case I'm going to show now was actually created for Wendy's. Uh, and the question is, where should Wendy's be spending? What should they be doing? Uh, and how do they paint creativity on a new canvas? This was done by VML YNR in the US. Take a look. Talk of Fortnite, shall we? It's the newest video game craze spreading fast among kids, college kids, even celebrities. Fortnite has taken over the gaming world, becoming the most streamed game on Twitch ever. So when Fortnite announced a new event called Food Fight between Team Pizza and Team Burger, Wendy saw an organic way in. We found out Team Burger stored their beef in freezers. And Wendy's doesn't do frozen beef. So we got on Twitch, chose a character with red hair and pigtails, dropped into the game, and instead of killing other players, we started destroying burger freezers. Again, and again, and again, for nine hours straight. We also declared our mission on Twitter, sending hundreds of thousands of gamers to Twitch to watch us play. And soon other players stopped killing each other and started killing burger freezers with us. Wendy's, dude, let's go! Top Twitch streamers took notice. I saw Wendy streamers over here. Oh, you smack smacking the river freezers? This shit's lit. Uh, this kind of stuff keeps the game fresh. News outlets were talking about it. Even Twitch posted a highlight reel of Wendy's best freezer kills. But most importantly, the game developers removed the freezers from every burger restaurant, meaning Wendy's had with Fortnite of frozen beef forever. So well done to VMO and a well done to Wendy's uh, award-winning campaign that uh, they put out last year. The second trend, and there's just uh, this one and one more, is that dry platforms are really driving transformation. And I want to play you an example uh, from Mindshare in India, actually, for Unilever, uh, Lifebuoy. And I'm just going to hit play, and you can see what they did. Beef mortality rate is 13% higher than the global average. Half of these deaths are caused by preventable diseases like diarrhea and pneumonia and occur in rural areas. 
Indians primarily eat and feed their children with their hands, not cutlery. Hand washing with a soap is the single most cost-effective intervention to prevent child deaths. Life Boy, India's number one soap brand, wanted to reach these people to change hand washing behavior and reduce the incidence of illness and death. Introducing Life Boy's infection alert system. Our solution was to create a data-led infection alert system to help Life Boy proactively educate consumers when they are most vulnerable to fatal diseases and activated through mobile, which has the highest reach in Google. Fueled with Government of India, data collected from 34,000 rural community health centers across 822 villages and sub-districts, the proprietary algorithm simplified big data to help understand the intensity, magnitude and trends of each of 21 communicable diseases at a weekly level. Modeling historical data on these diseases, we derived a predictive incidence rate. When an outbreak was predicted, we activated an automatic calling system that made on an average 8 million calls every week, alerting rural consumers contextually on the prevalent disease in their village and educating them on the importance of hand washing with soap as a preventive measure. Life for reach promising business results. Uttar Pradesh and Bihar saw a drop of 178,000 cases of the deadliest diseases during the campaign period. The infection alert system has now been extended to six additional states. One step towards healthy India. Life for very good. So um, one more. Uh, I think we're running to time. Uh, about ten more minutes. So get ready with questions if uh, if you have any. I think we'll have some time for those. Um, so the final example I want to I want to play you is actually for Mac Cosmetics, done by Ogilvy in China. And this is around uh, the point that uh, there's no such thing as a global brand anymore. Brands must be global and local. And innovation happens locally as well as globally. And I think that's a very important point. Culture happens locally. So take a look at what uh, Mac did in uh, China alongside Ogilvy. First time in history, Chinese shoppers buy more frequently on mobile than they do in traditional stores. In fact, 24% of consumers now say they shop less often at physical stores. Traditional retailers in China are all asking themselves the same question. What is the role of the physical store today? In the age of Gen Z consumers and increased competition from influencer-driven digitally native brands, it was time to rethink the entire physical customer experience. Welcome to the age of new retail, combining online interactions with traditional retail experiences. Max Experience Center in Shanghai is pure new retail. After six months of development, Max's new forward-thinking store integrates both online and offline brand experiences into a single customer journey. It blends product discovery, social engagement, and purchase into an immersive brand universe through intensive development of interaction design and technical innovation. Touch screens and mobile interfaces create interactive engagements with physical products. These were tailored to three hottest product categories, lipstick, eyeshadow, and foundation. From the moment you step into the new Mac Experience store, you're invited to scan for a WeChat check-in, instantly displaying a personalized greeting. It's just the start of an integrated O2O experience where the Mac WeChat mini program becomes your passport to everything the brand has to offer. Within the first month, Mac's new retail experience performed beyond all expectations. Store traffic and sales increased 400% versus a traditional Mac outlet. With Mac, we reinvented the physical retail experience for beauty lovers, opening up new ways for brands to interact with customers offline and helping Mac lovers go beyond digital to truly feel the color. I think this is a great example of using physical uh, for experience and driving back to digital. So, uh, and I've seen that store really fantastic. So I want to pivot a little bit now the conversation into talent. Uh, which is number one topic for us um, across WPP for the industry. It's a huge, it's a huge topic. I think it's very important, and I think that you know, a scale is important. Uh, when you use scale to drive innovation, that's even more interesting. And I think to, to deliver on some of these future challenges, 
you know, talent and expertise needs an absolute unique focus on the future and modernizing. We need to modernize our talent. And we, we're very focused across WPP at developing innovation with some of our partners, using our scale to best effect, using our scale to train our people uh, the best that we can. And it's a very important point for us. And um, if you think about the, the landscape of talent and how it's evolved, you know, what was important and what still is important, account strategists, creatives, these is traditionally where the industry began. But as we evolve, you know, a plethora of new skills, as you all well know, some of you, data analysts, experienced designers, creative technologists, discovery and innovation. I won't go through all of these, uh, but even nuances on data roles, so data analysts and data scientists. And then blown out even more in recent years, as some of the innovations that I've shown today come to life. You know, interventionists, avatar development, uh, even down to um, SIM, SIM developers. You know, these things are increasingly important. So you can see how the sort of talent landscape has evolved, frankly grown. And I think, as I said at the beginning of my presentation, you know, there's never been a more exciting time. And this is one of the reasons there's never been a more exciting time more inclusive industry uh, that takes on broader sets of talent that can all play and all will play a very important role. And I think that's a very exciting prospect, actually. Uh, and we're very focused on that in India, uh, I might add. Uh, when I was there, we spent a lot of time talking about it. Uh, but rather than hearing from me, I'm going to play you one last video. Uh, this is from Srini. Um, hopefully, he's watching. Um, Srini's our country manager in India, does a fantastic job leading WPP across India. They've just moved into a new campus uh, at the beginning of the year, which we spent some time in. So hear from India, hear from Ashwini and what he's doing in India on the subject of talent. I'm Srinil Srinivas, I'm the country manager of WPP India. Some of the new roles that we're having for that didn't exist previously are analytics experts, folks who can help us manage our talent, especially the younger talent. We have a chief culture officer at WBP India today to ensure that people are enthusiastic and motivated to come to office every day. Some of the other areas we're looking at are in e-commerce and coders as well. Today, you walk into any of our opcos, uh, you see a lot of people sitting and coding and could have imagined this uh, some years ago. Creative teams were largely made up of art directors and copywriters, but the advent of technology and data into creativity and into advertising, I think that's led to a big shift. Today, you need to have creative folks who understand different technologies, different platforms. So I think if you have to be in the creative department of an agency, you really need to be on top of the overall content game and not just the advertising piece. The roles that we'll be looking to fill into the future include people who have a very inquisitive mind, who are extremely collaborative, to not just adapt to change, but people who can actually lead change, who can help stitch all of the different services we have together, can actually really join the dots and uh, provide a holistic solution to clients. Thank you, Srini. Thank you, Srini. Um, I'm going to conclude by saying uh, that if there's a, one thing I wanted to take out of today is that it's an incredibly exciting time to be in the industry. We believe that at WPP. We believe that the best way to predict the future for us, for our clients, is to create it. And the best way to do that, as I said towards the end of my presentation, is through talent. Talent on all sides, agencies, clients, partners, and people that want to drive this industry forward. Thank you very much. We have time for questions. We've got about five or six minutes. Some miracle ended on time. So uh, I'll hand it back to Gatika and we can take a few questions. I'm right here uh, with you. And uh, uh, you know, the, the good thing about uh, the COVID age is that most sessions start on time and finish on time. So it's not a miracle, it's the new normal. <laughs> it is, exactly. We managed to do it on time. <laughs> we have two questions. We have many questions for you, actually, but I'm going to take two. So we remain in time uh, for the rest of the sessions too. The first one is, what is the secret when it comes for successfully transforming client businesses? Yeah, uh, that, that's a good question. I get that quite a lot. So I think the, um, the key to successful transformation uh, is that the entire company goes along with that transformation. And 
in order for the whole company to go along with that transformation, uh, you need a simple North Star, a simple set of principles across the company, and you need to push into not just technology, technology will help the transfer, but culture. And I think that's incredibly important. So my advice is always to make, because some, sometimes you know, transformation documents can be long, elaborate, uh, at times complicated uh, and challenging. And I think it's really important to simplify the, the strategy for the whole company to be able to, to go along with it. That would be my sort of uh, guiding principle uh, on transformation. I would say that um, uh, this is this is one of the reasons I believe that the the CMO role, the chief marketing officer role, uh, has never been more challenging, but also never been more exciting. Because if there's an individual, she or he, that can take the company forward in, in a transformation, I think at the CMO level there is a brilliant opportunity to do that. It connects so many different parts of the business, it, can it, it connects so many different parts of the business with consumers, whether there's a B2B step in between that B2C step. So for me, it's a hugely exciting time uh, yeah. and be well connected to uh, boardrooms and exec committees around client organizations. For me too, it's a very exciting time because in my little profession, in my little old way, you just have a blank plate once again, and it's so exciting to be able to create in this in this whole new space and create a new future, so as to speak. We have another question for you, Lauren. Don't go away. So the question goes, COVID has had a massive impact on how clients go to market and where, where they focus their budgets. Now, given all this change, how should brands prioritize the opportunities and position themselves to succeed in whatever the future holds for them? I think it's been. Um, I think. I think a lot of brands have had a significant inflection point uh, over the last uh, five or six months, and you know the conversations that we've had at WPP with our clients have varied. Um, I won't. I won't name too many brands, but uh, I think the uh, per, the topic of purpose has become so important uh, over the last few months, and uh, more so than ever. Uh, if I think about just to use an example that I showed today, if you think about Unilever, you know, Unilever has purpose threaded through the organization uh, and it has done for a long, long time. So when it needs to step up and talk more about it, it's actually quite a natural thing to do and they did it, they do it and did it incredibly well. Um, I think we've had conversations with brands that have looked at this period, you ask about COVID-19 and they've sort of challenged the fact that um, they've challenged their purpose. Uh, they, they've challenged whether they had a strong enough purpose. Of course, every brand needs a purpose at the center of the organization. They've also started asking questions about what the future looks like, the medium-term future looks like. Will the purpose they have today be relevant tomorrow? So um, what has it done to brands? Some have slowed down and listened to their consumers in order to be more active after the pandemic. Some were very confident on the purpose they had and activated their plans even more during the pandemic. So I have to say it's been very varied, um, but it does come back to, it has come back to in, in almost every conversation purpose. The one final point I'll make, and I'm happy to take one more question, is that you know our relationship with our clients during the pandemic has strengthened. Um, we have spent so much time speaking with them, helping with them, helping them uh, on production, um, advising them on a number of topics that we may not have been talking to them about before. Uh, and I think in that respect, um, it's really made us closer to the, the current clients and uh, long may that continue. We, uh, we kind of filtered out most of the questions, but I have a question that I want to ask you that, that is very relevant, I feel, and we'll make this really quick. So what we've seen in the last six months is that the pace at which humans have responded to this action, our reactions, the pain has been incredible. I mean, did you ever envision that we could have changed so much at such a fast pace in the last six months we've seen that happen? How, uh, how have we managed to pull this off across the world, across industries, across sectors, across governments, across nations? 
The pace has been incredible. Um, uh, look, I, I, to, I know I never assumed that we'd be able to do this. Uh, I think that uh, you know some companies, some brands were, were a bit more ready than others uh, to, to pivot to uh, you know, more commerce, more digital, um, uh, and, and more direct to consumer. And I think that uh, you know it's been really interesting to see that. But no, I think the pace has been incredible. I think the you know what, what we saw at WPP was well certainly on a personal level. I think it, it took a couple of weeks to really adapt. You know, it was a shock to the system. Uh, I think we went into lockdown around about the 21st, 21st or 2nd of March in March. London, uh, where I'm sitting now. Uh, and the first two weeks were tough. Uh, they were difficult. Uh, there was an adaptation period. But after that, I think uh, we got into our stride. And, uh, you know, there, it will be a mixed uh, way of working uh, post-pandemic. There's no question. There's no question about it, yeah. and I know that it's a you know for, it's fascinating for WPP because the situation for us is uh, very different uh, across um, our markets. We operate in so many markets that uh, uh, it's not the same everywhere. But no, I never expected it. No. Yeah, only a couple of weeks. You said that right there, and that's like a fantastic window of time for change. And for marketing, it's going to get very tough because mindsets across the world have changed. But then that's why we have all of you leaders here at Tech Munch. Thank you very much, Lauren. Thank you for spending time with us this evening. Thank you. Thanks, Katika, for having me. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.